what is it that makes an iconic game iconic? Is it tight gameplay? Perhaps a unique and googly art style? Maybe even a catchy score? But like most things, the answer's somewhere in between. This is a retrospective look at the Banjo-Kazooie series. What can I say about Banjo-Kazooie that someone hasn't already said? It's beloved, memorable, and just flat out fun to play. The mechanics are simple, yet refined, making it easy to pick up and just as easy to master. The gameplay loop itself is quick and rewarding, and never drags itself out. Most jiggies can be attained in a matter of minutes as long as you know what you're looking for. And the exploration feels just great because the controls are so refined. It's a joy to run and jump, similar to how it is in Super Mario 64. And the whole time you're running, jumping, and exploring, you're being graced with one of the best soundtracks for any video game. Grant Kirkhope outdid himself with the Banjo-Kazooie soundtrack. It's so good that it's not uncommon to find some of these tracks playing in the background of YouTube videos completely unrelated to the game. Outside of the music, the game carries with it an artistic charm, from the bright color palette to the lovely characters, all equipped with googly eyes. All in all, Banjo-Kazooie comes together to be a fun, light-hearted adventure that doesn't take itself too seriously or wear out its welcome, taking only around 12 hours to 100%. Banjo-Tooie was the game that I grew up with, and the one I always thought outclassed its older brother. Its worlds are bigger, its missions more expansive, but sometimes bigger isn't necessarily better. Now, Tooie carries with it all the artistic charm the original had, googly eyes and all, as well as another stellar soundtrack by the legend himself, Grant Kirko, and the tight controls and platforming. But somewhere in this expansion, it lost something. Whereas the first game was do X and get jiggy, now in Banjo 2, it's do X, do Y, and sometimes do Z to get jiggy. It slows the entire game down and really dragged it out and made it feel more padded and bloated. For comparison, in the amount of time it took me to 100% the original game, I only completed this one doing just the bare minimum. Now granted, that time I spent with this game was still a ton of fun, it just felt like there was a lot more filler playing it right after I played the first. The levels are much larger now and interconnected, making backtracking a necessity, unlike the original, which again, pads out the playtime and slows the progression. But the original game got the pacing absolutely perfect. Tui misses the mark a bit, but that doesn't mean it's a bad game, far from it. Mancho Tui is still a ton of fun. The worlds are unique and varied and offer a ton of exploration and puzzle solving if that's your jam. And the music will keep you entertained throughout. It's just not as polished or perfectly paced as its predecessor. Then comes the game that really went off the rails. Banjo-Kazooie Nuts and Bolts. Now I gotta admit, this was my second time playing through this game and I love it. I absolutely love this game. Does it fit with the other Banjo games? Not really. It's nothing like the first two. But do I care? Absolutely not. It went from being a tight platformer to a car building game and is somehow just as good, and that's honestly impressive. The main gimmick of this game is you can build your car block by block before every mission. And this gimmick is why I love it. Almost every mission can be cheesed if you're creative and make the right vehicle for the job. And flexing your creative muscles to make the perfect vehicle gives this game a ton of replay value and entertainment. One particular example is a mission that wants you to protect an egg from a storm of hostile planes. The obvious answer is to build a fighter plane yourself and shoot them out of the sky. But the more fun answer is to build a giant cage and simply place yourself over the egg and act as a meat shield so it doesn't take any damage. And this isn't uncommon. Almost every mission in the game can be completed in some sort of creative way. And that makes the game just so enjoyable, especially considering the fact that there's nothing else like it. No other game gives you this kind of game flavor. However, as the game goes on and the process of building new vehicles over and over and over does start to become laborious, and it slowly wears down and loses some of its charm as the game gets into the late hours. And with the game being over 15 hours long just to beat, 
it's not the best game to actually complete, especially as the levels grow more difficult and become a pain just to maneuver around. But while this game was not the best in this series, and some might argue that it doesn't even belong in this series, it's still a ton of fun in its own right, and if you haven't played it, I highly recommend giving it a shot just because of how different it is from everything else. The game gets a bad rap for not being another platformer, but I kind of appreciate just how far they went to make this game stand out while still retaining the characters, music, and sense of wonder that the other games brought to the table. And as one quick final note, the Banjo Land theme might be the best track in the entire Banjo-Kazooie series. The game is worth playing for that track alone. It's so good that it's been playing in the back of this video this entire time. So that is the Banjo-Kazooie series. Some would argue that it hit its peak in the first installment, and honestly, I would agree. However, all three of these games offer something. From a fast-paced and rewarding gameplay loop, to a large and expansive world that will burn many, many hours of your time, to a completely unique mechanic that makes it unlike anything else I've ever played. There's something here for everyone. Each game is phenomenal, and as a series, it's hard to state just how important and iconic these games are. Catchy. Iconic. Googly. This has been a retrospective look at the Banjo-Kazooie series. Thanks for watching.